What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check. And no, I didn't do a Raw review this week. No, I didn't really talk about anything else this week. But I am getting more and more and more excited, as I've mentioned on here numerous times already. I am going to Survivor Series in, uh, in September in Boston. And the fact that I'm already thinking about that tells you what I really think of uh, Battlegrounds coming up. We have a rematch for the WWE title. We have a rematch for the world title. And we have... Punk versus somebody I care about even less than Al and uh, Curtis Axel. So, Battlegrounds looks m m meh at best, really. Um, so I'm looking forward to Survivor Series. Survivor Series, a lot of people says, a lot of people say, sorry, has lost its luster in the past couple years because the Survivor Series matches don't really have. There's no goal, there's no stakes, there's no whatever, whatever, whatever. But it's only once a year, and it's something to look forward to once a year. Um, Hell in the Cell typically, unless it's a title match, doesn't have any stakes in it. Uh, Elimination Chamber, uh, when it was first created, didn't have any stakes. When we've had other matches of other types, you know, la a ladder match will always have a belt or something that you're going for, but a chairs match or a tables match doesn't necessarily always have stakes. And I like the Survivor Series Elimination matches. So what I've got here is just two matches that I would love to see at Survivor Series. I know they're not going to happen, and I know a lot of you out there that love me and love my videos are saying, oh, Dear Jesus, Colin's got his uh, his uh, fantasy booking hat on again. Um, but there's only two matches, and I'm just going to rhyme them off to you really quickly. I promise I won't take any more than maybe ten minutes of your time. I'm going to try. I'm only at a minute and a half already in this ramble. But there's only two matches, and basically this is a discussion video. A tell you the two matches that I want to see at Survivor Series that I probably won't, and B, I want video responses. I want you guys to put some uh, fantasy Survivor Series matches together based on what's going on in the WWE right now. Make me a video response. I will, uh, I'll give you a shout out somewhere later on down the line. If you just want to put your two cents down in the comment section down below, that's cool too. Uh, like Deluxe Man would say, do what you do. Um, really, it's one Divas match and one main event match, and like, Basically, everybody else can be thrown into like miscellaneous whatever. My one of my miscellaneous whatever matches would be the real real Americans and the Wyatt family versus the Usos and the uh, Lost Matadors when they arrive. But that's just that's just fun booking, isn't it? Um, the one story we got to go after at Survivor Series is. Uh, the divided divas division and obviously like this isn't going to surprise anybody i want to see natalia the funkadactyls and the bellas take on a bunch of divas that aren't on the show so what i want to see is aj and her team that she's sort of assembled already ready kind of you know the ones that are the ones that haven't legitimately been on tv in a long time so it's built in that they could say hey you know all these you know total divas divas are getting all the time slots or whatever is oksana layla and alicia fox now you know oksana and layla can play heels quite well alicia fox plays whatever they need her to play and aj is the best heel in the divas division and gotta be top five for best heel in the company right now just saying pipe bomb etc now the fifth person I have in, on that team is Caitlyn, and you know, four heels and a face don't make a good team. Well, A, it's always intriguing when you know the team's not going to get along at Survivor Series, that's part of the fun. And B, Caitlyn is awesome, regardless of what anybody wants to say, and for her to lose time, for okay, I'm not going to speculate as to the real reason she's been off television, but kayfabe-wise, for her to lose all the TV time that she's had to people that are only on there because of a reality TV show after having a great run, a great run of uh, attempts at AJ Lee in the WWE Champion or WWE Divas Championship, would be enough of a reason for me, her to be like, you know what? I don't like any of you guys, AJ, you and I hate each other, but we can band together for the greater good. You know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend type of thing, and then they can break down, and for all, for all we know, Caitlyn and AJ not getting along during the match could be why the total Divas Divas win the match, but it would still be a good match. It would show that Natalia is the only standout on the other side. Uh, it would give uh, a bunch of uh, the ladies that don't get a legitimate uh, bit of spotlight ever to uh, all get in there and do some, do some stuff, and I'm sure, uh, what the hell are the other two girls' names on Total Divas that don't really matter, uh, JoJo and Eva Maria, something like that, they could probably get involved and turn it into a 7-on-5 scenario or some bullshit like that, and that could be how they break onto Raw or SmackDown. A lot of good things could come from this match. So yeah, Natalia, Brie, Nikki, Cameron, and Naomi versus AJ, Oksana, Layla, Alicia Fox, and Caitlyn. Let's make that happen at Survivor Series, and you know... You know, Jerry Lawler, puppies, and it, 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 it'll be fine. It'll, it'll work itself out just great. Now, 
the main event is obviously going to involve the corporate team. Da 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 da. So we all know Triple H likes to insinuate himself into uh, main event matches, especially at the big four pay-per-views. So you know he'll be there. The chosen one, Randy Orton, will be there, and their bulk muscle right now is the Shield. And all of them together, they fit together. Their personalities fit together as a team. Especially when you see Orton interacting with the Shield, he was he does seem like their de facto leader, other than Dean Ambrose. Not taking anything away from Dean Ambrose. Don't get me wrong, but Ambrose is the leader of the Shield, and it looks like the Shield answers to Orton, who answers to Triple H. There's a hierarchy there, and it works, and it especially works when Triple H gets out of the way, and it's just Orton and the Shield. Now, who do you have go against them? Obviously Daniel Bryan, because Daniel Bryan's still going to be in the title hunt. Daniel Bryan would probably take out Orton in this match, I'm pretty sure. Miz has had his run-ins with Triple H, had his run-ins with Stephanie, and has been knocked out by the Big Show, and he had his head crushed in front of his family in his hometown. So he's got a lot of reasons to dislike the uh, the corporate faction. Ziggler was one of the most outspoken guys um, when they were doing the whole, hey, everybody that speaks out against Triple H gets punished, and da 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 He had to have handicap match after handicap match after handicap match against the Shield, and now he's got this budding rivalry with Dean Ambrose for the United States Championship. Now, whether I think that's good or bad is besides the point. It's what's happening at the moment. Cody Rhodes has lost his job and been uh, just, you know... He's been walked on by the entire corporation, the McMahon-Helmsley era part two, whatever you want to call it. Um, he made his comeback on Raw with Goldust, jumping people from the crowd. Incidentally, does it does it bother anybody or does it strike anybody as funny that Goldust, even when he's disguised in the crowd, still has a painted face? Is it so that people can say, oh, is that some random guy from the crowd or is it Goldust? Yes, but it's still really funny. So what I could see is Rhodes, you know, getting involved, getting involved, getting involved, and nobody being able to retaliate because he's not under contract and not part of the roster. So Triple H and Stephanie hire him back so they think they can punish him in this match. And the last one is going to surprise a lot of people. Yeah, he's the, he's the you know, the face of the company, and yeah, we're all sick of him, and yeah, we're all glad he's gone right now, but it's going to be in Boston, let's be real. Even I'm going to say it would make a hell of a lot of sense for the fifth man on this team to be John Cena. Yeah, I said it. Um... It is what it is. All these guys that uh, the corporation has tried to take, and, every, and a lot of people when I've talked about this on Facebook and all that have been like, oh, well, you know, you should include the Big Show because he's being mistreated the most. No, he's going to be used as a weapon by the corporate team before he makes any kind of turn against them. So I don't think this particular thing would be would be a thing. Plus, you've got ten great athletic guys in there, and Big Slow is just, he's, he's just the Big Slow, and... It is what it is. I'd rather not see him in a match. I'd rather see him be the scary guy that stands behind somebody else that's having a match. Does that make sense? Like, show Miz, for, the, for example. Miz was able to go off and be a cocky asshole because the Big Show was standing behind him. He was like the nerd in high school whose best friend was the captain of the football team and thought he could get away with whatever he wanted. Big Show's good in a role like that. I wouldn't want to see him in a match like this. But yes, the corporate team, Triple H, Randy Orton, Rollins, Ambrose, and Reigns versus Daniel Bryan, The Miz, Dolph Ziggler, Cody Rhodes, and oh yes, mark it on your calendar, I said it myself, John Cena. That's that's it. Those are my two, maybe three matches. The, the filler match was just a filler match that I was using as an example. But those are three matches that I would love, love, love to see at Survivor Series. Got my fantasy booking hat on tonight. Guys, thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in for a couple minutes and listening to me ramble. Tell me what you want to see at Survivor Series. Tell me who you want to see in what Survivor Series matches down in the box below or make a video response. Um, do it however you want to do it. But I promise this would be under 10 minutes and I'm already at 9 and change. So with that being said, I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation. Keep this conversation going. Give me all the responses you want. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, I'm tagging out. Bye, guys.